not said goodbye to the world. Ah! Mm. <laughs> She's not a YouTuber, guys. Okay. Hi, kids. Welcome back to my channel. If you're here, well, it's probably because you read the title. Um, this is the story about how I was left by my first boyfriend for an addict. A crack addict to be specific, but yeah. So here we go. This is gonna be fun. Um, if you guys see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my phone. I wrote notes in my phone just because this was like, what, two years ago now? It's been some time. <sighs> Okay, so where do I start? Okay, so yeah, this was my first relationship, so how old was I? I was 18, and the person I was with, well, I guess it doesn't matter how old he was, but I guess you guys probably wanted to forgot. He was 28, and our relationship moved extremely fast. Like, within a couple of weeks of me knowing him, I moved in with him, like, <laughs> yeah. So, all was pretty good. Like, our relationship was really, our relationship was a good relationship like I won't I won't knock it like he was really my best friend you know what I mean like and he treated me pretty good but our relationship was extremely codependent he is a very codependent person so am I but I think like two people together like that is just scary like our, our codependency was so scary like we for the whole basically year and a half that we were together we didn't spend a day apart not a whole 24 hours yeah, you don't get the context, now you do. <laughs> Basically we were together for about a year and a half and then one day we got into a fight and I just decided that I needed to move back home. Not necessarily that like we needed to break up, but like, she was like, yo, like I need a break, I need to, I guess I just needed to reevaluate myself and what I wanted from this, you know what I mean? I felt like I had wasted a lot of time. <sighs> that sounds bad, not with him but in the relationship because when we were in the relationship together we were so again we were so codependent like you can't do anything when you're body and bench like that you know what i mean what uh, i'm out man i think it's trip why y'all sin like that hey y'all weird i don't know so i just felt like i wasn't being my own person and i needed to find myself essentially right so i moved out but we were still together we were seeing each other like every couple days or so like you know like i was spending like a few nights home and then i'd go to his house and then I'd come, like like that right one day i'm at the mall and we share an uber account obviously we share everything so i'm at the mall and i was about to call an uber home as i'm going to request this uber i see that the uber is in use like the account is in use right now and i'm like what the fuck so i call sam we're gonna call him sam since i can't say his name so i call sam and i'm like hey what's going on like what the fuck like where are you no response he's not answering his phone so i'm leaving messages and i'm texting him and i'm kind of getting a little like nervous at this point because i know all his friends you know i know his people i know where he would have been and that address wasn't familiar to me right so i'm here like what the fuck like this is so weird i get home because i end up taking the bus home once i get home i call him and he picks up and I'm like, okay, like, what the fuck? Like, where are you? What's going on? Like, why are you ignoring me? Like, what the hell? And then I just hear a bunch of people laughing at me. And then I hear someone call me a stupid bitch, literally. Someone's like, get that dumb bitch off the phone. And then he hangs up. So now I'm like, what the fuck? Like, my head's spinning. Like, none of this is making sense to me. I'm crying. I'm freaking out. Like, huh? Like, where is he? Who is he with? What is he doing? And huh who's that bitch like because i hear females you know what i mean so i'm just here like who 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 are these people in the background like what's going on someone let me know sorry i keep looking at my phone i keep forgetting i'm a little high right now <laughs> and that phone call happened he hung up and then he went mia for like i think it was like two or three days it was a couple days he went missing i couldn't hear from him he wasn't answering my calls i called him like maybe like i think it was like three days later yeah and this girl picks up and when i was calling him like at this point i had i knew we were over like you know like i'm not stupid like i knew like i wasn't trying to save my relationship with him because i knew that it was done like he was acting so weird like again this is somebody like we were bought and bench like we did everything together 
we showered together, we brushed our teeth together, we shot together, like. <laughs> Wait a damn minute. <laughs> everything together like in my head I knew like he found someone else because that's the only reason why he'd be acting like this like right so I called him and I was calling him to see about my guinea pigs because we had guinea pigs together fuck you give me my animals and this girl picks up and she's like I don't know what she said word for word but I was just like hello can I talk to Sam and she's like no you can't talk to him and you're not getting your your guinea pigs back and then i think she called me a dumb bitch or a stupid bitch something along those lines she cussed me out essentially and i was being really polite too because like i knew my issue wasn't with her i i mean yeah i was pissed off like what the fuck some bitch is picking up my boyfriend's phone <laughs> but my problem wasn't with her so i wasn't gonna cuss her if that makes sense so i was very polite to her so i was just kind of like okay i just got cussed at that point now it all hits me this is all over like I'm not even getting my guinea pigs back, like, whatever I left there is gone, whatever is here is here. That year and a half, basically two years of us together, it's over. So I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm just losing my shit, having a whole mental breakdown throughout the house. My mom is here at the time and she was like, uh, Talia, what's going on? Why are you freaking out? And I'm like, you know, Sam, like, what the hell? And she's like, what do you mean? Like, he was here a couple days ago, because he was. We were still seeing each other, right? Like, we were still cool. So she was like, what the fuck? He was here, like, a couple days ago. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, like, he's, he broke up with me. Like, he's with somebody else. She's like, what the fuck? He ends up calling my mom. I think it was the next morning after, like, I spoke to the girl. He ended up calling my mom. And he was like, yeah. I don't know how to tell Talia that I just don't want to be with her anymore. And he hung up the phone. And that was that. <laughs> and um, I didn't hear from him for nine months after that. Um, I blocked him on everything, obviously, because I just got left. I was so heartbroken. But uh, yeah. I didn't have any reasons as to why. I didn't really know who this girl was, like, nothing. Okay, cool. I'm at work one day, fast forward nine months later, and I get a text from Sam. He's using somebody else's phone, and it says Merry Christmas. And I'm like, Merry Christmas, what the fuck? I'm like, who is this? And then, he, like, you know, he says who it is, and I'm like, what the fuck, like, what's going on? We start talking a bit. I end up figuring out that this person that he left me for does very hard drugs. She's a, she, she does crack. And he's now doing crack with her. So I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, now I'm like, huh? Like, I mean, I'd been with this man for like, you know, a year and a half. And I mean, I knew he had problems, but mm, heavy narcotics was never an issue, you know? Like, he had an alcohol problem, but, you know, that was never in our world. So I was kind of like, you're doing what? <laughs> you're smoking what? <laughs> like, okay. I attempted to have a friendship with her, with her and him, actually. Well, it was with him, essentially, but with her and him. I attempted to have a friendship with him for basically a year after that, while he was on drugs. But that was basically impossible. It was really hard because, um, well, if you if you know anybody with addiction or who struggles with addiction, they're extremely selfish. They're only thinking about themselves and, and getting high and they don't care about your feelings and they tend to make empty promises and they use you and a lot of the times it's for money and yeah. So we attempted to have a friendship for a bit. Um, I only attempted to have a friendship with her because I, they were together, right? So like I knew if I wanted to be in his life even a little and just be his friend that I had to obviously be cool with her. I let everything go, but um, obviously it hurts to see somebody that you care about doing that to themselves and going down that path. And um, I know you guys are probably gonna question like, why did you wanna be his friend still? Like, <laughs> look at everything he did, like why? But I guess, um, I know who the person is inside, I guess. I, I guess maybe I thought, or I think. I like to think I do. I don't know. And 
because I know that there's no future with us anymore that I don't know I just wanted um the best way for me to put this is I guess if you love somebody enough you'll always want to be in their life if that makes sense we have this understanding like we just have some type of bond I don't know and I have a lot of love for him I just want him to be in my life and I want him to be in my and I want to be in his, I guess, despite all of that. And even though I don't want to be with him. I ain't gonna never stop loving you, bitch. And I know people are probably gonna be like, huh? Like, bitch, make up your mind. Like, what the fuck? But like, I don't know. I guess it's because he was, he was really my best friend at a point in time. So it's just like, with all the relationship and love shit aside, especially because like, I had started seeing other people, I dated somebody after that, I fell out of love with him, right? So like, once I fell out of love with him, it was easier for me to just be like, okay, well, this isn't hurting me in the sense that I want a relationship with you, but this is hurting me in the sense that, bro, you're killing yourself, like, I care about you and look at what you're doing to yourself. Like, these drugs are not, you know? I watched him become a very sane being into a very questionable person like and I, I knew who he was and what he was capable of and then seeing that switch and seeing that it was just it was a lot but I guess the person that I am I don't know I just I loved him enough and I still love him enough to want to be there for him so I, I knew that he was struggling if that makes sense I don't know if I I don't know if I describe that at all well I feel like I was just in circles with that but yeah fast forward maybe I don't I don't even know what the time period is now because it, it had been a while I was in a relationship for like a whole year and he was doing his own thing we had no contact um, I tried to be his friend it didn't work I was basically trying to be his friend for a couple months it didn't work out we lost contact completely. He was doing his own thing. I was in a relationship doing mine. And then she or he contacted me one day. I think it was her. She contacted me one day um, about him. And I was like, huh? Like, I don't even talk to him. And then he ended up messaging me. And then yeah, he ended up dealing with some things. I'm not gonna talk too much about his life, but like, yeah. Basically he ended up in jail and I got a phone call from jail, from Sam. And he was just like, yeah, like me and her are done and I need my friend back. I was like, okay. I mean, that's a lot, so. Sorry you guys, I'm everywhere right now, holy shit. I'm on drugs, okay. Um, yeah, so basically he was like, yeah, you know, I'm in jail and I, 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 you know, I really need you. You're the only person I have. Bear in mind, he has lost everybody, basically, due to his addiction. Like, any friends he had before are gone. So, um, I kind of understood that. The person I am, I was just like, okay. I'll be here for you, you know? I don't trust you really, but I still love you, I still care, and I'll be there for you. And yeah, he's been sober ever since, thankfully. And hopefully he continues to be sober, so good for him, we're proud of him. But um, that's basically how I got left. <laughs> it's kind of sad, but it is what it is. Actually, yeah, one more thing I want to touch on. I don't want anybody to think that addiction is a joke because I, I think, you know, people don't realize addiction is, is an illness <laughs> and people with heavy addictions like that are mentally sick and they need help, you know? They don't need jail, they don't need prison, they need, they need rehab and they need loving, caring people to be there for them. But also with that being said, loving and caring or even just being a friend for somebody with addiction is not is not easy because it's it's not a linear road and um, relapse is a big part of recovery and I've put up my own my own walls and you know I, I have 
have him at a distance for a reason, obviously, but at the same time, we are still, we are like still currently friends. We do speak and you know, I'm his number one supporter. He's probably gonna watch this actually. <laughs> but yeah, like no. Yeah. I'm his supporter. Want well for him. And if anyone else is like out there struggling with addiction or is with somebody with addiction, um you guys just know you're not alone and like I know it's like not easy like I'm not in it now but um when I was in it it wasn't easy because sometimes you don't even know the person you're talking to <laughs> you don't know if it's if it's them or if it's the drugs and yeah it's just a lot it's a lot to take in especially when you used to be in love with that person so if you guys are struggling with anything like that you know I get you I feel you you can even message me about it I'll, I'll talk to you but yeah, that's the story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope it made sense because I'm pretty sure I rambled on. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Comment down below if there's anything you guys want to see or want to know or you have any questions about this video. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.